Welcome to the first episode of the Pathsetters podcast, where we delve deep into various professions, exploring the pathways, challenges, and advancements that lie ahead. My name is Diane Siedu, and I'm pleased to introduce our guest today, Dr. Jacqueline Lote, a leading expert in the dental field. Dr. Lote is the Chief Executive Officer and Chief Dental Surgeon at IDC Dental leading a well-established team to deliver a quality and satisfactory experience to over 9,500 patients. Dr. Lote's expertise extends beyond borders, as she holds active licenses to practice dentistry in Beijing, Singapore, Florida, and California. Nominated for the 2009 Woman of the Year in Dental Health Award by the American Biographical Institute and selected as one of America's top dentists by the Consumer Research Council of America, Dr. Lote's hard work and impressive portfolio have been recognized across various institutions and organizations. Dr. Lote, thank you for sitting down with us today. Without further ado, let's dive into some questions. Regarding your educational background, you received your bachelor's degree in electrical engineering from the University of California, Irvine, and your doctor of dental surgery degree from the University of California, Los Angeles. Congratulations, doctor. Can you tell me about your interest in college, starting with what drew you to UC Irvine? I think um, college was just part of our our raising up. You know, being an immigrant here, it was just, uh, it was about education. It was about, uh, you know, when we immigrated here, everything was just focused about education and, and, and learning so that um, so that we can, can basically just survive and be independent. So, so college was just, uh, yeah, this is, this is what you do, you know, you know, uh, you need your, your job and your role is to study and, and, and go to college. So, so, so to answer your question in that sense, um, it was just a given and, and, uh, it was part of the culture of our family and, uh, UC Irvine, um, you know, I, I find myself very fortunate that that I was had the opportunity just to be able to be in California and in this area because um, having options of applying to different colleges were not an option. Uh, you go to the school that that is next next door or nearby, and uh, and uh, we were fortunate to be in a wonderful system, the UC system, and, and UC Irvine was a commuter school, so I was able to to uh, get accepted to there, and, and it had all the opportunities for, for us to, to move forward. You mentioned that there was this duty and obligation that drove you, as well as this cultural piece to it. So could you share with listeners a little bit about your immigration story? Uh, I am uh, an immigrant from Vietnam. So it was 1975 that we left the country uh, my, because of the war. And my mom and my mom had to pick two out of four kids, um, either stay in Vietnam or be able to escape. But she was only to bring two, two out of four kids. So here's a mother that had to choose, um, make that choice. So, so I learned from that. I mean, she's, she's the brave one just to, to hear all the stories. Um, and so she picked me because I was the youngest and my brother. So she, t- she t- picked the two youngest kid, kids. Uh, eventually, my sister and my brother made their way to the U.S. and we were all united, but uh, reunited. But, uh, but at, at that time, when you make the decision, you don't know whether you would see them again. Um, and so that's, you know, in, in looking back, the world was, was much more welcoming. Uh, there were, the population were less, and, and we were much more fortunate to be able to, to, to have an opportunity to immigrate and, and, and escape a war-torn country. Um, I, guess, I guess if you were to equate what is similar to, to your generation, to the generation now, not your gen- to, to, to what's happening now, uh, it would be an equivalent of the Syrian refugees, right? Which, which is much harder um, as we, you know, it's a different, different time. Thank you for sharing, Dr. Lote. I appreciate the openness. Since the beginning, your journey has been characterized by perseverance. Now, throughout your university times, did you ever encounter an obstacle 
where you found perseverance to be the key? The one thing that stuck out of my mind is actually uh, a failure. Yeah. Um, well, f- first I picked engineering um, because I wanted to do something. My, my, my family's in the healthcare is that is a different path. And I wanted to do something that was different. Um, I picked engineering because a woman in engineering were, uh, was rare. A woman was, was much less than male in engineering. I, I just, I didn't know anything about engineering. I had no concept. Uh, I just like, just pick something that, that, um, that is, that women doesn't do as much. And, and I, I did that. I said, I, I wanted to know why. And I, I felt it was challenging. And, and I said, I said to myself, well, if a guy can do it, I can do it. <laughs> so that's how I pick engineering. Uh, one, you know, what stuck in my mind, I mean, there's always the good part, you know, the, the connections you made growing up. Uh, it, it is a, a, a journey that we are seeing things and creating relationships and, and dealing with, with uh, uh, scenarios that we've never felt had to do before but I, I do remember a failure and I think that was um I wasn't doing well in a writing class and and uh and I I turned in my paper uh and I knew it wasn't a great paper and I just turned it in and I didn't face I was I was too um uh, I was too embarrassed to face the teacher so I just dropped it. I just dropped the the paper and I left. You know, I it was it was it's, and um, and later on, I was you know she I was confronted. You know, I was you know we we had a teacher and I had a little chat and and what it taught me was um, you know she she didn't judge me on my paper. She judged me on my action. And 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 even telling you the story now, I could feel. The, the shame I had, not, not shame. I mean, it shouldn't be, I, I, she didn't shame me. She didn't, she didn't make me feel bad. Uh, what she did make me was recognize that it wasn't about the paper. She wanted me to, to face up to, uh, you know, it's like, she wanted me to like be there and give her the paper and say, I didn't do well, you know? <laughs> um, so that was, that taught me a lesson and that, um, you know, and, and, and I stood there and I listened to her and, and that took, uh, yeah. So, so that actually stayed in me the most. And, and actually it, it was a class that had nothing. It wasn't, it wasn't a revel. It, it was just a basic class that I just had to do and check it off. And, and perhaps maybe that's why I didn't focus on it and didn't do well. And, um, it wasn't my forte, but, but it taught me the most, le- the most thing that, that now, gosh, how many years later that I'm telling you that story? Because that's how strong it stuck in me. And, and from that point on, um, I, 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 I was brave in, in uh, facing uh, uncomfortable situation. And uh, like, because it's not going to go away, you know, uh, difficulties won't go away. You just got to face it. And and whether it's it's embarrass you, whether it makes you emotional, um, you just gotta get to just go through with it and 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 see where it goes. Yeah, you know? so that's it. Yeah, and I was nervous coming up to this uh, <laughs> this podcast. I'm like, okay, Jacqueline, just do it. I don't know what you're gonna say. You're gonna make a fool of yourself. But just do it. <laughs> no, you're doing absolutely so, yeah. amazing. In your journey from electrical engineering to dentistry, were there any surprising connections between the two fields that influenced your approach to dentistry? Uh, absolutely. I, I didn't realize the connection until I was actually in it. I, I, it was my choice. I fought for engineering pretty hard because, like I told you, I was just so determined to do something different. Uh, um, and then suddenly here I am four years later telling my parents that this is not where I want to be. Uh, one of the reasons is that um, I, I want to be more, more 
and I wanted my my career to to have more interaction with people. I I, I enjoy being with people. I enjoy um, the diversity of each day. Um, and and I just knew engineering wasn't fully for me. Um, and so I picked dentistry really as a as a as a uh, possibility. But but. I was like, okay, let me try dentistry. If it doesn't work, I was ready to jump again because once I jump ship, once I change, not jump, once I change ship from from engineering, I felt that I had the 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 courage to to change again if I needed to. But I wanted, and once I was in, actually, engineering opened the doors for me for the rest of my journey. Um, I. You know, that I got an interview into the dental school because of my engineering. I I looked different, you know, on my resume. Um, my GPA was was not as high as the other pre pre dent or pre med, um, but I was I was engineering. So I got I got in the door. I mean, I got the interview and, and went on from there. Um, and once I was in dentistry, if you think about it, dentistry. Um, Dentistry is engineering, you know. The the, the E part of dentists is, is actually engineering because we 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 use our hands and we 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 you know there's occlusions and it's like we're like the architect of of the mouth, you know. Um, so there's a lot of of, of uh, engineering science behind it. So so there was the connection in which I got to use my mind. Um, I love dentistry in the sense that I got to use my mind. I got to use my heart because it's 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 healthcare is about empathy to people and I got to use my hands, which is uh, you know, the technical part. So so yeah, I got to use all parts that, that I love. How do you believe your diverse educational background has shaped your mindset or approach to dentistry and patient care? Um I I I feel that you know, um I, I feel that my I got I got an opportunity to 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 see all different aspects and and the more you know, um, you know, and when when you're so specialized, some sometimes when I see people so specialized, they all well, how how should I rephrase this? Um, you only know what you know, <laughs> and so when you see something and 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 you only know it, that's that would be all that you would focus on. And and it's not because, uh, I, I, I'm not quite sure how I can phrase this. It's just the more you know, the more you're able to to, to see, I think. And that's, that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, you could be very good at one thing, which is great. And, and, and it makes you just, you know, better and better and better at it. If you, if you um, but, uh, I guess, like if you if all you do is cook a pie and it's dessert, then you keep on thinking pie. But there's just so many other desserts out there. <laughs> That's a terrible <laughs> analogy, but but my point is, um, you know, this it's important to do to know how to do something well that is passionate for you. Uh, but it's also important to to have more knowledge so that uh, so that you are you you can um, attract you you can care for all the other aspects that are important to other people you know so so i I feel that that my background of of all these uh area allowed me to see the patient in a in a in a, in a, in a or a person in a, in a full capacity and 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 then don't you know i i forget sometimes and um and so I have to back up and 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 look at look at it in a in a different lens. So it does does help me to acknowledge that and understand that, that those tools are needed. Yeah. I love the pie analogy. Thank you for answering, Dr. Lote. And now I'd like to transition a little bit into your current role as CEO of IDC Dental. You are the CEO of IDC Dental in Beijing, China, and you've significantly expanded the client's patient base and reputation. 
So what strategies have been instrumental in achieving this growth? And how do you maintain high patient satisfaction levels? Um, well, to, if you want to be a CEO, just start your own business. You can be a CEO. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I, 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 you know, all these titles, I, they're, they're, they're there and they're, and they're, they're there to, 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 uh, uh, for, for others. Um, but, but I don't, I don't, I don't, you know, um, I don't relate to the, I don't, it doesn't identify me. So, so what, what did happen was, um, I was working for other people, um, and then came a point was, you know, I want to try my own business. I can always go back and work for other people, but uh, at a certain time and, and period of my life, I, I want to try. I have the energy, I have the resources, let's try. So that's when I started my own, you know, I started um, a separate company. And that was, I, you know, I, I took over a failing, uh, a failing business and, and I, you know, and it became my business. And, and therefore, I became the CEO. You know, so so start your own business, and you can be the founder and the CEO, <laughs> and uh, and you hire yourself basically. Um, and uh, you know, I I got an opportunity. We started with seven hundred patients when I came in. There were, you know, my first, you know, we we labeled the the chart uh, based on the patient. If you're the first patient, your chart number is one. You know, so I remember my first chart number in this fail because I took over a failing clinic. I bought over a failing clinic and there was seven oh one. And and now uh, I think we're like thirteen thousand and it's just it's just, you know, I was it's like one of me, two nurses, one receptionist, you know, one one um just very core, a core uh, a small core group and, and you know we you know, you have to, you have, the main thing is like, why did you do this? You have to have a core reason, you know, and once you have that core reason, and once you have a, a, um, a philosophy of what you want to do, then every, for some reason, and, and, you know, very fortunate, everything, everything uh, worked to make it, to make it um, happen. And, um, and, and I wanted, uh, I could work for somebody else, you know, but I wanted to try something on my own. So that was, that was number one. So I was willing to suffer. I was willing to, to struggle or to, to start to have less. That's, that's it. You know, you have to go back and be, accept less so that you can, you know, I was willing to accept less so that I could try to, to see if I could create something on my own okay um another you know the other one was you know the mental capacity of worst scenario i I thought out of the worst scenario and and my worst scenario wasn't so bad you know you you think you think of your worst scenario okay so what happened if this fails what happened not fail okay didn't work out the way you wanted um you notice i change words the reason I change the words as I speak to you is like sometimes I, I don't want to use negative negative words because failures, it's not a failure. It's just didn't work out the way you imagine. And then, um, and, and the worst scenario wasn't so bad. Like I said, I could go back and work for somebody else. You know, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't detrimental to my health and it wasn't detrimental to the people around me uh, in a negative way. So then that's, so I took that. And then the third aspect was, uh, what do you want this to be? You know, um, I want it to be something that I couldn't control when I work for other people was about my patients. So I wanted to be able to, to give an affordable, good, affordable care, you know, where people couldn't fully afford it. Um, and, and and I wanted to be, you know, but of course, I, you, you run a business, you still have to think about the practicality of money, but I wanted to be able to balance, being able to give, to have a power to give back and, 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 uh, and, and, and give to people that 
uh, just to be able to give back in, in whatever capacity. And I wanted that control, not, not control. I wanted that freedom to, so that's, so I, I had a vision of what I want to do. And that, those are the core things I felt that is, is, um, was important. And, and, um, and it helped, you know, to, to, I will, to, to move, like, make sure that when you do something, is there's a purpose of it, so. What are your visions for the future of your company and its role in shaping dental health care in Beijing? I have to say, I am so lucky that I, I got to play a role in, in, in the community in Beijing, right? And, and we all have our roles, and, and I'm so glad that I got to play this role um, to to be to be part of you know um, people's health and and confidence and and some some are basic and others are life changing you know uh, you know I, I have patients that come to you know, and that's the rewarding part which 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 I love um, and I'm so honored really to to have that opportunity. Uh, to, to be part, to contribute to our community there in Beijing. Um, and, and I have since then, um, since then my company have now been acquired by a bigger company. Uh, so I have handed my small role into a bigger company and, uh, and now I am working to create, uh, to, to bring in, you know, technology, AI, all these are are just moving so fast, and so we really have to keep up with it. And and the way I keep up with it is to bring in younger minds, uh, minds that are being trained at this level, you know, talents that I can see have the talent to do this. And and my job is to share my experience. I am more at the mentoring stage. For for my company, uh, but but for myself, I I run I want to now, you know, so to focus more on on the charity aspect as well. Um, you know, when I was in dental school, it was just volunteering, uh, going down to Mexico and and treat, you know, kids in school, uh, brushing teeth, and 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 as I grow my platform is is bigger i can i can do bigger things um you know i i can raise bigger money i can i uh you know our clinic brought in orphans from uh from orphanages and and we treat them at the dental clinic you know i, I close the clinic down i bring in the orphans i treat them uh so 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 as we grow on my platform of of giving And to transition into some questions about the broader industry that you work in. In your opinion, what are some common misconceptions about dental health or the industry? Misconception in the industry is that it's 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 uh, it's an elective. It's it's not important. Uh, you know, uh, it's so so. I don't think people put as as much value to to the dental health as as they they should uh it's it's they see it more for looks than for health sometimes uh and yet they fail to see the connection of the health of the oral cavity to the overall health of the person um you know from the the mental confidence uh to the 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 physical biological um nutrition you know this is the first part of of digestion you know uh so so and and chronic infection it, we call it chronic infection meaning that the mouth can have chronic infection in which you have infection but it doesn't hurt and it's there but it does it's part of your body so, so people don't understand that it comes from the mouth um not a sense of not feeling well um, so so the oral health 
has so many connections to your body from um, that that people don't put that much effort into it and and they compromise they compromise their dental health thinking that it's not as important but if you have a good oral health it actually uh is is helps your mental and physical well-being overall yeah yes yeah, so floss your teeth is the message so, so i think that's the misconception of the people well that's a misconception really so that's so basic <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But yes, yeah. Well, no, no. I'm just saying that that you know, it it, it it's not a mis. You no, know, yes. It's it's just that you know, people just see dentistry as brushing and flossing teeth. Oh, okay. And and dentistry is is that's what I mean when you said, oh yeah, floss your teeth, and that's that in itself makes it you know uh, makes it makes that the misconception right that, so actually know, that's what i'm actually seeing say. and understanding how your dental health connects to other aspects of your health is more and more important yes okay. right yes so i yes. have to really it's not just like you. oh <laughs> yes so that's yeah you know of course of course we brush it you know but, but it's not like oh just brush your teeth and floss you know <laughs> Oh, yeah. As soon as I say I'm a dentist, you know, that's the misconception, right? <laughs> so throughout your career, you've gained clinical experience and knowledge in various aspects of dentistry. So which area fascinates you the most? All the area and all the, all the area based on, on where I am in my, in my career. At the beginning, I loved surgery. I was young. I was, I was, I was energetic. Um, you know, I thought I was badass, you know, like there's, there's an arrogance in me. Uh, and so I love surgery. And I'll tell you, you need a little bit of arrogance to be a good surgeon because <laughs> you got to you got to go in. You got to know what you're doing. And uh, yeah, you, you got so, so at the beginning, it was all about surgery. It was about getting my hands wet and just going in there. Um, and and then as I knew more that I didn't know, like I told you, I wanted to go into fields that I was weak in, you know, but, but they weren't necessarily my passion, you know, and now as I am older in which uh, my mental, my strength is now the mind versus the hands, you know, um, orthodontics is, is my interest. And so to answer your question is, um, I, 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 I'm interested in every aspect because they're all important, you know, and, uh, and right now my, my interest, my most, my area of most interest is, is in orthodontics, um, children, uh, yeah, you know, my, my previous was in the past was geriatric, uh, so I, like I said, I just got a chance to work, you know, with, with, you know, with all fields and uh and and at every point i try to to go into the field that that either that the field that interests me is either the challenging field that that i want to be better at or the field that um that is most needed at that moment that that speaks to me at that moment you know and and we have so many that we can choose from um, you know, from from children to older people to to uh, the medically severe. Um, so it, it really has to come from from where you are at the stage of your life and what speaks to you. And 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 there's so many places for us to give back. Uh, you know that that there's there's nothing. It doesn't have to be the final spot, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, and 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 success is could be big or small, and it's all successful. You know, if you if you make a change in one person's life, Diane, if you if you mentor something and you change that person's tra trajectory in life, 
you know, how is that, you know, that is just as important as somebody who made an impactful policy change that affect uh, millions of people. You know, your, yours isn't any smaller. Ours isn't any smaller. It's because, you know, we need all of this, right? People that make big policy changes can't take care of this one person that may have fallen through the cracks. You know? So that's why we, we need those up here, but we need these down here to, you know, uh, to, to make, to make the, the full impact. So, so yeah. Anyway, I'm not quite sure that answered your question. No, it does. <laughs> it does. But that's, that's how I select what's important for me and, and how, yeah. We will move into some concluding questions. Uh, if I was to restart, would I choose the same path? Um, I, I, I don't think that way. So it's, uh, it's just difficult to answer, you know, not difficult to answer your question. My, my, my answer is that I don't think that way. Um, I don't think with regrets, you know. Um, I think that's only what, you know, because um, if you pick a different path, something else will come up that you didn't anticipate. So, so therefore, for I can't, I can't answer that that question for you because uh, because I, I the only thing I, I I you know if my mom didn't pick me out of the four kids, I would have a different path. You know, so so some some things are were out of my control right <laughs> and uh yeah you know uh, and and if you pick a different path if you say you know would you pick a different choice and pick a different choice something else would come up yeah some some you know this would have been better oh i should have got i should have picked you know i should apply to this other school i should have picked that other school and it's like okay you picked it and then you're in it, something else would come up that, that may be good or bad, right? So, so whatever you're on, you're on. <laughs> you did, trust me, you didn't pick that path to be on it, you know? Um, that path would pick for you, you know? There are people that were born by birth, they were born poor. I was born poor. I was born in a third world country. Here I am in a first world country as a doctor. And it's like, how lucky am I? I didn't pick that path, you know? There's, um, uh, so, so, but so whatever path you are on, you get to pick what you do on that path. Okay, that's it. And if you don't like that path, then pick something and it'll put you on another path. And then you go from there. So, so when I, so, so when kids ask me for college and what to do, you know, it's like the one that are confused are they like, oh my God, my friends know what they're doing and I don't know what I'm doing and I don't know where I'm going. Um, you know, you, you just, you aim for the highest star because the highest star is the most challenging star to get on. And, and, and as you go there, Everything that you go there are building blocks for you to go to a, to a, to a, a not lower to a, a star that isn't so far, you know. So so you aim for the highest. You aim for the hardest, and you aim for the highest. <laughs> it's you may not get there, but you aim for the hardest, and you aim for the highest because as because that's the longest road, right? <laughs> that is, and that's it. Yeah. incredible advice and that concludes our recording for today thank you so much dr lote for opening up to listeners today and for a wonderful first episode thank you to all pathsetters listeners for tuning in please subscribe to discover more episodes check out our website for more information and follow us on social media at pathsetters podcast our next episode features a business mogul my hint for the next episode is 
Morgan Stanley and Adaptive Growth Leadership. See y'all next time.